Welcome everybody. Welcome back to another painting stream. You got some work to do. I'm gonna be painting the last Minotaur Armored Container from Games Workshop. It's part of my submission to my local game store's uh, terrain contest. Let's see what we're using today. I really don't. <clears throat> good thing about terrain is I really don't need to use a lot of really fine detail brushes, at least not until the very end. It's because I mean painting the container is amazing because it's just big strokes, you know. <clears throat> Let's get started. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with paint. <clears throat> so, got our wet palette prepped here. <clears throat> and so I painted the last couple crates. I painted this one like an army green, you can kind of see, with the orange. And then this is the one that I painted for the video. I painted this one like a Mad Maxi orange with the dark blue. And now this one, I actually want to paint the dark blue. I'm actually going for the Rook's Table Navy. I think that'd be pretty cool. <clears throat> so I don't have that, obviously I don't have that specific color in paint. But I'm going to try and achieve as close as possible to that color. So let's go ahead and let's just get started. <clears throat> I'm going to take this brush, and I have the Cantor Blue from Citadel. And let's just start loading some of this on the palette. We're going to need a lot of this. This is the base of the container. A lot of that on the palette. Palette's very wet. Like, I don't even <clears throat> try and manage how wet it, I just completely soak it. And then put the sheet over it, soak it again. And it thins the paint really well. I have not encountered a problem where it's thinned it too much. And yeah, I'm still, I'm still adding blue here. I, I guarantee you I will run out even when I decide it's okay to stop. It's just that much paint. Like, I've done this both times, two different containers, and I've run out each time, thinking like, alright, there's no way I'm going to need more than this. Wrong. I will. So let's <clears throat> put that there. What we're adding to it today, it's going to be the Rigid Leather Brown from uh, the Underdark paint set. Let's just put a little bit of that right here. I'm using the Rigid Leather instead of <clears throat> the Rhinoxide. Because Rigid Leather is a little lighter, and I don't want to get too dark. I do have the Rhinox hide here in case I do want to go a little darker. But let's see what this looks like here. Dark in that blue. Okay. Let's see what this looks like. This is already primed and assembled, by the way. And I think that we have achieved the, the navy that I want. It's really that simple. I'm not going to use this brush to <clears throat> paint this whole thing, but I will just get the rest of the paint off this brush. Hmm, maybe it can be a little darker. I'm looking for like a duller, kind of more worn blue, you know? Hmm... And it's okay if the brown shows through because it can look dirty. Let me wash that real quick. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Let's grab a touch of the Rhinox side here. <clears throat> oh. Let me retweet out the stream first. <clears throat> Let's get some people in here. Oh, Lamb, what's going on, man? <laughs> Thanks for the follow. I'm just tweeting out the stream. We're just getting started.
I am live painting Warhammer Train and chatting. Stop by twitch.tv slash rooks table. <clears throat> Come on. There we go. I'll drop it in the uh, the Yugi uh, Yugi Tube chat also. Come on, quick auto correcting it to love. There we go. <clears throat> and one more place I gotta place this. should be good all right so what we are doing today as i was explaining is that we are going to paint this container and these barrels and these tiny crates and that's what the little warhammer people get on top of and run around <clears throat> i painted one that's like this army green I painted my second one which is like a mad maxi orange and now i am going for the rook's table navy so i just mixed some blue and some brown together to try and achieve that effect and before i did that i was going to add just a little more brown i don't care if the brown comes through as brown because it's a crate that's like out there so it doesn't matter if it's dirty or it's brown you know so i'm not even going to mix this I'm just going to kind of let it sit in the paint and then you can kind of see that translate <laughs> Ooh, that's brown right but you get a little more blue in there and you kind of see do a little blending right there on the model or on the model this is a container now Let's a little more blue yeah and I don't want it to get too dark as soon as I get you want the base to be dark so you can highlight accurately and effectively but you don't want it to be too dark I'm not painting painting it black all right, let's switch to the big brush. Okay. Let's go right across the top. Let's see. container was spray primed with black and then white primer to achieve kind of this gray look let's go for this door got a lot of paint on the brush Okay, yeah, that's that kind of dark look we're looking for. Little, little darker than kind of my signature navy, but that is okay. And just kind of blew up these walls here. They were the brown was winning over here. We're gonna just put a little more blue here. Yeah, and as I figured, looks like I'm going to need to add more to the palette. I always think that I added enough. I've done two of these now, so you think that I would know, but no. I do like this color, though. 
All right, let's see if we can make the magic happen a second time. Yeah, that's a really dark blue, isn't it? <clears throat> let's uh, open up my Cantor blue from Citadel. Let's just put a little more. I hate when it's a, it's like a pot. You don't want to get any brown in there. It's hard to just dump it right onto the palette. You really got to kind of scoop. Yeah, that one almost got away from me. Okay. <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we'll add Rigid Leather Brown from the eyedropper. This is a lighter brown. And even if we have to mix this like four different times, that is totally fine. Because the best part about the terrain is that it can really end up being four or five different variations of the same color just you know weathered and worn in places yeah there we go there we go just getting the rest off of this uh, this brush and then we'll go back to the big brush Let's go across the bottom here. Don't want to leave any gray. If we have to get back in there with a smaller brush, we will, but this is one of the most fun things to paint so far in my painting journey, just because you can just slather paint all over this thing. There's really not too much detail that you're trying to avoid covering up. And then the bottom here, I mean, I can kind of be a little careless with painting the bottom because what I usually like to do is I'll go back with like a, a brown or like a lighter kind of tan and I'll just start throwing dirt everywhere. But we want to get right in there just to make sure everything at least has that initial coat of blue. So if I miss stuff with the dirt, you see that it's that blue that it's supposed to be. All right, I picked up a little bit of the brown again from here. So you can see that's kind of translating. these corners hmm. yeah a couple gray spots here I mean the other thing about terrain is that even if you you can be this is probably the best beginner thing to paint because if you mess up and you don't even paint all of the overall the primer well, who's to say that it didn't, you know, it didn't look like this, you know, like it's just rusting away. Let's make ours a nice full color though. And we'll get a little paint on ourselves. Yeah, there's no, I usually hold all my minis with the Citadel kind of base holder, but 
there's no holder for this so we'll just kind of get dirty hardest thing to uh, <clears throat> to avoid doing as you see me do it six or seven times right now is um, painting over something again that's trying to dry because what you might end up doing is you might end up making unnecessary textures and unwanted textures all right, I'm just gonna grab a drink here. Right. Okay. All right, what else is, what do we need? I think we got enough paint. We just got to do this side. This side has not been touched. And this is a fast drying acrylic. So, like, I can already touch the top and it's dry. actually a very wide spread on the palette and not intended but it's a huge palette like I'm probably gonna use maybe eight to ten colors but I and and maybe a couple of washes kind of the the, the um the kind of more liquid ones to kind of coat everything at the end but I'll probably still have room interesting there's uh definitely one side looks a little browner than the other let's uh well we're gonna have to come back anyway with this blue so let's add just a little more let's add a little more in here mix it up and there it is right there yeah just coming off the tip here and onto the palette and you know what? Let's not add any brown yet. Because how far off are we? It's kind of hard to tell in that light. But you can actually, actually kind of comes through here. You can see this is a bluer side than this. But it, I mean, it really doesn't matter with the terrain. But maybe this is the kind of a newer spot. Not as touched as the others. Okay. Yeah. And we might come back over, you know, you, it's, it's easy to leave brush strokes um, on a first coat. Especially if they're just like sweeping strokes across the top. So maybe we'll come back. Let's grab a little bit more of that blue. And did we leave any like glaring spots? No, let's just let's try and... Let's just run this across the top. Kind of give it a little more of a the bluish color over the over the dark over the dirt all right and looks like we gotta get here still ah uh, get under here gonna try and get rid of some of these brush strokes Yeah, there we go. A couple gray spots there, but filling those up pretty quick. And I think I got a... Oh, yeah. Always full of surprises. Always a spot you think you got and you didn't. There, get under there. How about over here? Yeah, same deal. Yeah. 
these little hooks these hooks so all these you had to glue together <clears throat> this came in a huge sheet sprue you had to cut these out glue them all together so there's four pieces of the container then there's uh, actually each one of these had to glue on they kind of stack it makes them stackable there's this little radio you had to glue on so in the video I did I actually went through that whole thing but now that I'm just streaming I just want to paint man I don't want to do all I mean I did all that last night <laughs> so but I wasn't gonna go through stream doing that that's like straight up like probably a half hour of its own okay it's a little darker than I wanted but leaves opportunity to highlight and I could have constructed this with the door open like I did with the other one but then I would have had to like paint the inside of it and uh, I would have had to think about kind of like mud coming out of the front of it and I didn't want to do that I just wanted to paint the container this one all right I think oh I really spray primed the white really laid the white on over here it's a little lighter it's re it really makes a difference the color that you prime um, if you prime black um, things just come out darker if you prime white things come out lighter I always always go for a green I'm not advanced enough to know when I should lean towards black or white but uh, I am getting some accidental experience as I accidentally coat more things with one color than another in the priming process yeah that looks good that looks good all right <clears throat> there's our container let me get this light come on okay get this light more on this yeah, that should do it. Mm -hmm. Blue. Blue as heck. Alright. <clears throat> now, oh no, not look at paint on the shirt. Okay, did we get everything? Yeah. This looks good. Ah, no. You look at it too long and you find little things. I gotta stop doing that. This is why sometimes like one mini will take two hours you just get you learn to get faster over time what was the one this one this one I'm, I'm very proud of but it actually took me like two hours because just so much going back and forth <clears throat> uh, let's well looks like we got a little more paint on the brush so let's just try and get that off we do not want to waste this six dollar pot of paint yes you heard that right thanks games workshop but also thank you to just games rochester which is a uh, good supplier of paints all right we're done here and yep the cup will the paint cup will be blue tonight and yeah. <clears throat> hey Shy, thanks for coming. Thanks for hopping in. <clears throat> We're painting terrain for Warhammer. I'm just uh <clears throat> I'm doing a Sunday stream for my local game store. They want me to God, the blue will not come off this. <clears throat> they want me to um <clears throat> paint the zombie ogre, which is like a new mini that came out. Um, it's it, and uh, <clears throat> the thing is, is that they're marketing it to everyone that buys one, like it's a class that I'm gonna teach. So I'm not an expert yet. I've been doing this for maybe two months now. But um, so yeah, I'm getting all the practice I can get, especially on camera. It's big to get it on camera because um, <clears throat> I find that painting off camera and painting on camera, I have two totally different experiences. Painting off camera. I take my time and I achieve better results like this one and I did this one last night I think those look good but I found that painting on camera I end up trying to lean more towards entertainment and then I rush things so I don't want that to happen so this is great experience looks like it's a little, little excess paint here let's just kind of spread that around Yeah, a little extra paint. <clears throat> All right, so we have our, our blue container. Anything on camera is more pressure even if you're comfortable. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> I've been working on just public speaking and my camera presence for like probably two years now. Uh, and <clears throat> whether it's 
doing a video, streaming, doing a huddle, it's always, there's always that little thing in the back of your head. Pokemon commentary sounds fun. I wish I knew more about that game. I came in, I came into the Smash community in general, <clears throat> um, it was when Ultimate came out, so I think Pokemon had already kind of seen its time, so I really actually have no experience with the game. I played it once in a car ride, I think, on the way to CEO, in, um, it was CEO 2019. Keep finding spots that I missed, but that's okay, because like we said, we did the container, it's okay if it's different colors, it's out in the elements, it's it's worn, um, and even if I miss a spot, uh, it's alright, because, you know, it might have rusted away, and we got that, that kind of gray prime, so it's fine. <clears throat> it's a fun game, probably won't play it again. <clears throat> Played a fighting game with Uni. I bought the collector's edition of uh, Uniclair, <clears throat> and um, I made my pilgrimage to Versus versus his first Uniclear tournament where Ian was there and he held my hand through the whole experience because I didn't know anybody. I met Mel there. She was really cool. And I met a, a few other people there. Um, and I was like super into it. I was like, this is going to be it. This is going to be a thing. And then like literally like two weeks later, COVID happened. Yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's make some dirt. I'm not going to do these yet crates in the barrels i'm not gonna do these yet let's make some dirt so normally i have um you guys want to see something embarrassing normally from the dirt <clears throat> i have rack earth flesh right here it's a great color unfortunately something happened and it popped open one night and it's actually just completely dry actually well maybe <clears throat> there's a lot of dried stuff in there but it's really hard to tell if there's anything left in there that's worth salvaging <clears throat> i hate to see that go um, so let's make our own dirt this time. So, man, how many, how do I want to do this? Let's use Rhinox Hide for this. Mel and their partner, they're great. Yeah, yeah, I only met her that one time, and then I, like, I think she's also streaming. Uh, she also streams, and I've seen a couple of her streams and stuff. Yeah, you get Mel streaming on screen. I actually did pop in to hers to see what she was up to before I started mine. All right, let's get Rhinox Hide here. This is a dark, dark brown, and we're going to use a lot of dirt. We're going to use a lot of dirt. Let's get a little bit of brown there. All right. <clears throat> now, matte white. Add some white to this. Because we want a lighter dirt. And that's quite a bit of white. <clears throat> so let's just see how that, that turns out. Show me the dirt money. All right, we're achieving. We're achieving something. <clears throat> it's not quite the tan rack earth flesh that I'm, that I like and I've used before. But I mean, we are, we're getting there. <clears throat> Do I have a preference for either painting, terrain or characters? That's a great question. <clears throat> I was actually just talking about how I like painting terrain. <clears throat> I like them both in their own ways. I like painting terrain because you can get really sloppy with it. It can be so many different colors. <clears throat> you can leave prime exposed. You can just start, you know, putting this everywhere. Like it's, you know, it's been sitting in the dirt, right? So it's like dirty. And there's really just a lot of <clears throat> however you want to do it. Like just splash, just splash dirty. Oh, dirty here. Got dirty here. Oh, dirt coming off the door. See that? Um, <clears throat> so with terrain, love that. And this is like this, all the terrain that I've painted that's on this table is the only terrain I've painted. Um, so I find that I'm enjoying that a lot, but with the minis, it's, uh, it gives you more of an opportunity to, to, uh, perfect some things and really get into detail. And I find more sense of an accomplishment painting a miniature, um, than I do terrain. And I think that the reason behind that is because currently I don't use terrain for anything. I don't actually play Warhammer or Age of Sigma or any of those. It sounds really expensive. Um, so I actually just paint them for just games, Rochester um but the minis i actually use we use for D, &D. um my father-in-law is running a campaign that started last month and uh actually this friday is the next one but uh <clears throat> this human rogue that i just painted is an npc that he wanted painted and so it feels pretty good to see that on the board so yeah i uh i guess that the answer is whew, 
The answer is minis. I like painting minis more. But train's fun. <clears throat> train's just fun. You're splashing. Just splash some dirt. Is that the dirt that I want? Yeah, you know what? That looks that looks fine. Some on the door there. <clears throat> yeah, train is definitely more forgiving. <clears throat> How do I kind of right here and here? Kind of ooh. Well, actually I want to leave one side blank. <clears throat> I want to leave one side blank. Because I want to try and <clears throat> this is gonna be my submission to their to just games train contest i think i already painted two of these but i want this one to be my submission and the reason why is because i think i want to try and put the uh i'm gonna try i'm not an artist i just i so i'm just not i mean i feel i don't know i guess mini painting is is being an artist but i'm gonna try and do the rick stable logo on the front of the store so we'll see how that goes <clears throat> um but let's see how much preliminary dirt that is oh yeah no, no, no. i can get much dirtier and I can really just kind of let the paint run out of the brush here because then what happens is you get into a dry brushing situation where it's not covering everything. It's just sort of taking, uh, just sort of taking little pieces of dirt, right? Little pieces of dirt off. And we can just kind of get the bottom here. If you do art, you're an artist. Thanks, Shai. I appreciate it. Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes I wonder, but uh, well, my wife is the real artist. She's a graphic designer. That's her career. <clears throat> I just, uh, all I am is confident, I suppose. <laughs> like, I re I went to Just Games um, <clears throat> because I wanted to do, obviously, I do Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. I started to do magic stuff. <clears throat> so I went to them because I was like, you know, here's what I do. Um, I didn't even approach them with a the channel. I approached them like, you know, I'm just looking to gain more experience in the industry because it's my hobby. And, uh, you know, can I volunteer on a Saturday or something like that? <clears throat> and I, And then they brought me in and... You know, we talked and then the conversation shifted more towards the YouTube channel and kind of my camera presence. And then they're like, well, can you can you learn to be a really good miniature painter in like two months? Because we need we were having trouble finding the, the combination of somebody who's who's has charisma on camera and someone who can paint well. And I was like, sure, I'll do. I mean, I was ready to do anything to get in the door with them. <clears throat> so um, now I'm a miniature painter. So I guess, you know, that's, I mean, and you know what, <clears throat> I, this is definitely in the two months I've been doing this, it's something that I, I'm glad that I did. And I, I think that I would continue regardless of what my relationship with that story goes. But like I said, painting with them Sunday, painting the ogre zombie figure. So just learning to get better. So as I was mindlessly rambling, I think that I have really good dirt texture on this bottom and let's just go, let's go across some of the sides. Still haven't dipped the brush again. Right. Okay, and ooh, no, I don't want to get too smudgy. Don't have to. Don't have to force it. Get it right across the vents here in the top. Yeah, there we go. All right, I think I've officially found my secondary color actually, because this is now all over this thing. I'm not going to do the top, though. Let's leave the top pristine. But we can go across. And actually, way in the vents, it's I did not prime. Well, I mean, I did prime, but you see that the blue didn't catch there. So with the brown across it, it kind of looks like it's rusted, dirty. Okay, that's looking better. Maybe a little bit across the top. All right. All right, what do I usually do next? Uh, what do I usually do next? Let's grab, let's grab this uh, $2 detail brush from Michaels. And we have the Underdark Gray from the Underdark paint set. This is probably going to look close to the dirt, actually. <clears throat> Put that on the palette. That is, it's different enough, <clears throat> which is good. <clears throat> let's maybe do a little white. Let's make it a little lighter. Just a little white right there. And I like to use this brush to mix just because I don't want to overload a brush that I'm actually trying to do detail with. Okay. Yeah, nice light gray there. Is that going to be too light? We will find out. 
<clears throat> but what I plan to do with this gray, yeah, does that look, that looks different enough than the dirt. <clears throat> <clears throat> now what I want to do with this is let's just <clears throat> take it to the take it here and this is giving this is supposed to give that that kind of rusted look it's a lighter gray to really contrast against the dark blue I think in the other models I used a darker gray because the base coat wasn't as dark as this. But that looks pretty good. Let's do the other side. And I overloaded this brush so I can just kind of take it, take the side against it here. As opposed to trying to, to draw a line down. And then also, and here we go back to being forgiving with terrain, it doesn't matter if it's a straight line because... You have no idea what this container has been through outside. You know, rust it away. Whereas a mini, you know, you accidentally one misstep on the mini and then all of a sudden it looks like the cuffs and the arms are the same thing. You know, stuff like that. Let's grab, yeah, let's grab just around these two. right there just these little it's it's amazing one of the things that I, I continue to learn about mini painting <clears throat> is that it's amazing where you continue to find um, just spots to highlight in places where it's like oh yeah or oops I accidentally got that there but you know what oh that looks good all right I'm gonna try I'm gonna make one final uh, I'm going to try and get some more people in here. I'm going to tweet. Uh, no, I'm not going to tweet. I'm going to put this in the Just Games Discord. <clears throat> the guy's usually pretty strict about sharing links. But I sent him an email beforehand. Said, hey, I'm going to warm up tonight. <clears throat> hey, guys. <clears throat> I am streaming painting some terrain <clears throat> for the terrain contest. If you would like to join me. <clears throat> it's at twitch.tv slash rooks table. Hey everybody, if you're enjoying, hit a little commentary at action at you. If you guys are enjoying the stream, please retweet that stream. We are at twitch.tv slash rooks table. Twitch. Well, if I can spell... I shouldn't be allowed near a phone. Oh, God, that was very hard. All right, we got two. Oh, Ian and Shy. Oh, my God, Ian's here? Oh, shit. Okay, I have to actually pretend like I know how to do art. Oh, fuck. Good thing I have this, uh, I have a little liquid courage off, off screen. Mm. Okay. Good, Ian's here. So now we can get into the nitty-gritty. So... <clears throat> We have our, our dirty container. We got the blue base coat. We've got the dirt kind of off the bottom. And we have some of the kind of rusted gray coming through. Let's grab our detail brush. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just kind of go through all the lines. They're on the top. So you can see, I hope the light catches that pretty well. But let's just, just give these little highlights here. This is real cookie cutter stuff. So... When we were dealing with the bottom, you know, the dirt, you can throw that anywhere. But here with these lines, I like to just put the lines, put the accents on where the, the ridges are. He pretends to be a stream producer. Yeah. <laughs> we all pretend to be a lot of things. Until we are, funny enough. Story of my life. <clears throat> All right, and we got some <clears throat> lines here. <clears throat> and you know what? If I'm going to actually try and do the Rook's Table logo on the front of this door, then I think that white is going to be a valuable color to use in some other places too, because I would use the white. Mm. 
I hate painting. You are better than me. Oh my god. I'm like I'm dreaming. I think painting's really fun. <clears throat> you get a um. <clears throat> so, uh, Ian. Oh shoot. Check this out. Do you like my overlay? Let me tell you how I did it. <clears throat> All right. Last time I streamed, I didn't have shit. Uh, pardon my language. I think that this is a <clears throat> this is a code of conduct stream. But um, <clears throat> so this overlay I threw together in ten minutes. And uh, you're going to laugh, but I have access to all the Adobe products because my wife's a graphic designer, but I only use Premiere. I refuse to learn anything else. So I made that you can make this in probably Photoshop, right? <laughs> Wrong. I made a new Premiere program. <clears throat> I took my background and I made three different layers of it, like top, bottom and to the right. <laughs> then another layer of my of the castle. And then I made all the texts with the ads and the YouTube. And then I hit the screenshot button on Premiere. That's how I make my thumbnails. And that's how I made this. I refuse to learn anything else. I say it works. All right, let's go over here. And we got all these lines. We got all these lines here. Well, let's just keep applying. Ooh, okay. Sometimes it's hard to get to keep like a good grip on this while also trying to get it in camera. I'm also still trying to f just fiddle around with my camera <clears throat> because uh, it doesn't seem like it's close enough sometimes. Luckily, we're using tr we're painting terrain, so I think that it's a little better to see. Um, but mini sometimes it's hard, and the webcam I'm using is it's like a basic Logitech one where you. Uh, you can kind of see it gets a little grainy if you really look. That's why, actually, that was one of the reasons behind I was trying to get the overlay done. Because I think that it gave me an excuse to make my um, actual video smaller so that maybe it would be less grainy. Sort of worked. Okay. And where are we? Yeah, let's do this side. We don't have to do the lines on the bottom. It's fine. It's the bottom. And we'll speed up. That's how I do my commissions. Yeah. <laughs> Just screenshots. Oh, you think I, you thought I meant screenshot in Premiere. No, I'm talking about... Windows Control S. Snipping tool, baby. Just kidding. I don't do that. I think I actually did that a few times, like a couple years ago, and I got yelled at. Okay, keep going with the lines. Ooh. Best part about the train is that really you can also be done kind of whenever you want to be. <clears throat> like, uh, yeah, actually, I don't know if I like how that contrasts with the dark blue. It might be too light against this uh, blue. So let's make it worse. Let's get the matte white. Yeah, let's just put a little piece right here. Okay. Yeah, that might be a little too much of a contrast. Let's see how this looks. Straight white. <clears throat> okay. And let's just get, let's catch the rim of this. Wow, yeah. I don't trust myself to do this well enough. Oh no, that looks fine.
Yeah, all right. <clears throat> Let's do the other room. Oh, you know what? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Let's do this room. Don't want to press down too hard. Oh. Alright, okay, good enough. Alright, and then let's, uh, let's color these in. Why not? Yeah, 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 that looks good. <laughs> yeah. Hmm, okay. <clears throat> yeah, that looks different, huh? That looks much different. I do like the dirt, though. <clears throat> Alright. What complements blue? Anybody. <clears throat> well, I've already used, like, a bunch of different grays, browns, and whites. Maybe it should be brown. Because <clears throat> normally I would say orange. But I don't know if I want to do orange today. <clears throat> Give me just under dark gray. We're not mixing any white. Let's see how, what this looks like. This might be a horrible idea. We're going to attempt the stripe. My stripes are terrible. They're so terrible. Let's try it. So I'm going to use kind of more of a flat brush for this. <clears throat> yeah. And we'll dip it. Oh, that's... It's kind of frayed. It's kind of all over the place. How's this one? Ah, uh, man. I need new brushes. All right, let's try this one. Maybe yellow. Ooh, yeah, actually. I can see yellow. I can see yellow on this. Yeah, let's do that. Just, just in the nick of time. Shine in the nick of time before I dipped into the gray and tried a gray stripe. Oh, God. This is why I started streaming these. I need some external help. <clears throat> um, do I have a yellow? I have... This is going to be weird. I have this yellow called Ancient Mummy. <laughs> um, but that's bright. That's too bright. But I should be able to add some brown to it. And, uh, right? That's how colors work. And we should... Ooh, that's bright. Look at that. Should be able to add just a touch of brown and then get what we want. Ooh, give me the brown. That's a bubble. Oh, oh, okay. Wow. Well, then paint filled the bubble, and then the bubble dripped onto the palette. Oh my god, that's gonna be that's gonna be dark. That is gonna be dark. Let's see. Oh no, the yellow is winning. It's oh, you can't see, but the yellow is completely swallowing the brown. Oh, never mind. The brown's making a resurgence. All right. I can't do this left-handed. I'm gonna. The camera's gonna be blocking this, but I am going to tell you the results of the yellow versus brown here in just a second. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> That's what we got. <laughs> it's definitely softer. And let's let's give it a shot. So let's go over here, and we'll put this one right down the middle. I don't need to do. <clears throat> sometimes I do. Um. Yeah, let's put this one right down the middle. Get out of here. All right, my stripes are terrible, but we're gonna we're gonna be fine. There we go. Ooh, all right. Okay. Let's keep that party going up. It can be a little thicker. And if I don't like how thick it is, well, I go back to the blue. And I go backwards. That's still kind of bright, but not too bad. Yeah. Every time I think of uh, yellow, I think matching it with purple. And then I start thinking of, like, Wario and the Rocket League car I used for two years. You know. But the yellow and blue looks good. Yeah. Really kind of pops that that color. Do it right across the top here. This actually might be one of the better stripes. 
it's not kind of going all over the place. <clears throat> And let's come around here. And come on now. Ah, uh, there we go. Always a flaw. We clipped a window. Just barely. So we'll come back. Let's flesh this out here. And come across the top. Let's... Oh, no. We got to see. In a little... Uh, Getting a little gung-ho. That's why we're practicing. A little more. Let's come down. Skip the skull. Skip the skull. Skull's got its own color. And we'll, we'll bring it across this bar. And that's that. All right, yeah, I think that that's, yeah, I think that works. There's your stripe. <clears throat> Do I want to flush this out anymore before I rinse this brush? No, it's all still drying. I, I just have to come back over it. Let me just kind of put this one to the side for a second and grab a little bit of the blue that we just still have tons of from the base coat. And maybe we can correct a couple lines here. So. This one got a little crazy. Uh, it's still drying, so that's not going to give me. That's not going to help me that much. Let's just leave it. Let's move on to this one's going to look really weird because I have this idea for <clears throat> the skulls. There's little skulls on the side of this thing, and I usually paint them like a light brown or a gray. <clears throat> But that's the color of the dirt this time. So we'll use... Oh, God. Oh, actually, this might have... All right. We'll work with this. We have the Retributor armor. It's basically like a deep gold. Almost thinking about maybe blending a little bit of the stripe with this. Potentially. Uh, well, we'll see. I want the skulls to be this color, though. So let's just grab a little bit of it. And this, this paint is notorious of being really thin on me, which I hate. Just, it's runny. The palette's very wet. This is an Army Painter wet palette. <clears throat> and it is it's very wet. So it thins the paints. Most paints, they thin <clears throat> just well enough. But some paints don't cooperate and behave. So uh, sometimes they get a little runny. But let's just let's go to the skulls here, and let's just try and... Let me just take this gold. Oh yeah, look at that. It's almost like kind of a copper. It's like a darker gold. Yeah. So that's look that's actually not looking bad. That's a good color on this thing. I think I want to keep the stripe yellow though. I was thinking like, oh what if I kind of blend the gold in with it? It's like a yellowish, but no, the skulls are pretty cool on their own like that. I also plan on, so the, the little barrels and crates behind me also have skulls. And I like this color for those. Let's go here. Okay, <clears throat> and can't forget the skulls on the doors. <clears throat> okay. All right, that's that. 
Anything else I want this gold color. <laughs> oh, let me just bring this in close for just a little touch up on this skull. This is going to be the front door, so I'd like it to look perfect. Hmm. Yeah, that'll do. <clears throat> what else do I need on this? Well, we're going to wash this probably. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> now, this yellow is probably... Oh, well. All right. We're going to hit it with the hair dryer. Too lazy to wait. Um, grab the blue and let's try and let's try and fix our line a little bit. Mm. I'm gonna drive myself crazy trying to fix the line. I think that I should just call it. <clears throat> By the way, guys, the songs you are listening to is no copyright sounds. And like my go to for everything. Just look up like no copyright sounds top 100. You'll hear these. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. Okay. <clears throat> See, now I have second thoughts, because now I'm like, do I... I don't know how I feel about the white rim, now that I got this yellow at my disposal that, that looks good. Maybe, I mean, we're dealing... We don't want too many colors now, do we? Oh, but I do want to put the logo on the front door, so that my... <clears throat> that my <laughs> dodging copyright is so stressful. I know, there's like... <clears throat> I put them in, in any video that I do that's longer than like 15 minutes... <laughs> which is usually like an intense like a match that goes on i just throw this in the background <clears throat> you know otherwise i use youtube audio library and i have like four or five that i that i keep going back to that are like three minutes i may stretch them to nine minutes these my videos trade me at 10 minutes but yeah <clears throat> these things are great there are a lot of top 100s though and usually the first comment is like watch out at minute seven this one actually switched to copyrighted don't use this i'm like all right thanks guy so <clears throat> i think i have like two videos where uh, copyright was infringed just because of a song that clipped through. And it was like, you can't monetize this video. And I was like, oh no, what am I going to do with my already unmonetized stuff? Uh, let's try, all right, I'm just going get, to get on with it. I'm going to try and paint the, the castle, the Rook logo on the front door. And I'm just uh, not confident, but I am prepared. So I'm looking at my own overlay <clears throat> to try and figure this out. And uh, please uh, just bear with me. Here we go. Okay, what do we have here? We have like, we got like, we got like this thing. Okay. And then, uh, huh, huh, huh. this curves down. And goes that way. <clears throat> Doghouse used to be able to monetize, but now everything we upload is demonetized because it's unavoidable Nintendo. I was wondering about that actually, <clears throat> because I've never tried to pursue like making Smash stuff. <clears throat> it's I thought about it at, at first, but um, I was at the I was in the mindset that <clears throat> you know I should be good at something <laughs> if I want to try and make videos about it. So I was really good at Speed Duel, so it was a slam dunk. <clears throat> but I always wondered how um, videos on YouTube worked with Nintendo music. Although, even though I made a Smash commentary reel, and I put it on JJJ's channel, which is an unknown underground channel, um, and I, I don't remember seeing like a monetary strike there, but I assumed Nintendo was going after stuff, but I wasn't sure if they were like, I don't know, like banning people or like trying to flag stuff and get it taken down. <clears throat> but it seems like Nintendo is probably now just like, whatever, you can't make any money off this, but we understand that there's going to be crap tons of smash videos 
Um, here we go. Here we go. Making the magic. Is like when I used to trace things in elementary school only I'm not tracing this is a paint off the head all right little and the flag aha okay we <laughs> at the top of it <clears throat> you might have gotten lucky in only tracks which redeemed okay yeah well I was also screaming over them so I guess that that is uh I got that going for me Okay, this is where things get rocky. This is where things get rocky, and I don't know how buildings work. I'm definitely going to paint over this poor skull I just painted. <clears throat> All right, little drip there. How do you paint? Like this, look at this. Does this look like something? Oh my god, that almost looks like my logo. <laughs> um, <clears throat> All right. Now, here's where I don't understand uh proportions and i make and this ends up being a very short and fat castle because i'm already half halfway through the door but according to what i'm looking at on the logo i'm probably like a fourth of the way through the logo so um here we go now we're gonna do the the sweep down and i'm also gonna make it too curvy unrealistic expectations it's too curvy of a castle you know what? It, it could be a little chunky, a little, little fat. A little chibi castle. There you go. And we'll bring that all the way down here. And then it kind of has a little bit of this. And my wife designed this, by the way, so she should be the one painting this. Um, she probably didn't even use Premiere to make this crazy. And then that goes there. And then there's like a, yeah. It's kind of at the bottom here. All right, progress. Ooh, there's a lot of white on that side in the windows. And she's got like the brick. There's the brick there. Uh, okay. 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 We got one rim. Okay. Three rims, two rims. And three rooms, and this one's supposed to technically come in under the bottom, but it doesn't. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. And this one extends all the way here. And now we have to... Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Progress. Now we got to come down here. You know, we can probably leave this skull as is. I don't think I'm going to touch it. But we got to think about, oh no, a window goes right there. That's okay. The skull will just encompass that first window. Uh, and then it kind of comes down and that's where the door is. Oh no, there's like tiny, tiny navy lines to do the door and the stair. No way. That's not happening. <laughs> Weird. This is a very, yeah, this is the chibi version. Where you don't see all those details. Uh, and then this kind of comes here. Now we just fill in. Hey, I'm good at this part. The filling in. I filled it in. I went in the lines. Oof. All right. Uh, one more, I think we can kind of get a little space out here to clearly show a window. And then that's, uh, that's all I got guys. That's it. All right. Can I get a, um, what do they say? What do the gamers say? I want that in the chat because I think that I did. Okay. Clip. That's the clip right there. <laughs> that's the clip. And I just splashed water outside of the cup it's fine there we go can i get a puku muku in the chat please the best pokemon in the world yeah yeah i think it looks good <clears throat> 
you know, honestly, I think that a lot of the, <clears throat> well, looking at this one, <clears throat> so I mean, this one on camera, I'm sure it looks fine. <clears throat> um, honestly, you know, as a, as a uh, <clears throat> get, be, beginner going towards intermediate and experienced mini painter, <clears throat> I think that a lot of my stuff from a distance looks good. If you ever notice how I put post things on Twitter <clears throat> that are minis I painted, I take a picture from far away and then I crop it. But I crap it like I do like that movie that uh, that movie theater experience so that Twitter does it right. But um, just don't zoom in because I still have trouble. I think that I put too much paint on the mini sometimes because if you zoom in, it almost gets that's where it kind of looks like a blotchy mess. But out from a distance looks great, just like this. Look at that. It almost looks just like uh, this, right? Yeah, there <laughs> it looks just like that. <laughs> This is going to be my submission for the, uh, <clears throat> this will definitely be my submission for the Turing contest that my local game store is doing because what they're doing is, you know, obviously it's a win-win for them. They're giving out some free stuff, um, hundred dollars store credit to like the best terrain, but all the terrain that they receive, they're going to use when events come back. They do have a large Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Um, <clears throat> they have a large fan base that, that buys, I mean, according to them, painting sales, mini sales are up since COVID. So when events come back, they're going to have a lot of people who want to play. And there's going to be Space Marines that are going to be running around this, this container. And you know what? That just warms my heart. That's all I wanted. So, yeah. Well, then let's move away from the container. Oh, no. Before we do that, let's just darken our... Um... Let's go back to this yellow. Because let's just go over our line one more time. Just because that, that dark blue is kind of hard to cut through with a lighter color. And I left some brush strokes, so I just want to go through, go through here one more time, really strengthen that, yeah. Actually, this side looks really good. I don't even have to. A couple spots there. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Go one step further. <clears throat> so, on this container, <clears throat> there are these <clears throat> little guns called storm bolters. They actually they, they don't recommend you glue them in because they pop on right here, and then in a game of Warhammer they like swivel, and you can actually use them to shoot. So Warhammer games, <clears throat> your army is is made up of points. And like a, a really broken, like super powerful mini is like 50 points. Whereas like the grunts are like 10 points. I don't really know the complete extent of it. But I know that this fortification set, which is one container, three barrels, four crates, is actually 40 points contributing towards your army. And I think that one, a lot of the reason behind that is because they come with guns. That you can actually like, you can climb up on this thing and you can shoot with them. And they're pretty powerful. So we're going to paint the little guns. <clears throat> what color do I usually paint this? Uh, we're going to need another color for this. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> we have the Duergar Metal, <clears throat> which is just a fancy word for a black metallic paint. And we're going to dip into, first we're going to base coat this with something else. Oh yeah, that's right. This is still yellow. Huh, let's clean that. Oh, it looks like I got a spam thing in the chat. I don't know how to ban that or delete that. Is it easy? Does not look easy. All right, we're just going to leave it. No one click on that. There we go. <clears throat> uh, what color is this going to be? <clears throat> you know what would be funny? 
if this was um, the yellow. Let's make this the yellow. Should be able to delete it by clicking the name. Add friend whisper. Ban. Banned. Slammed it. All right. Thank you, Shy. All right. Let's make these pretty yellow guns. So just... Yeah, we're just gonna coat these completely yellow. And we get a little more paint than that. Yep, <clears throat> there we go. These are gonna look so threatening. They're gonna look really threatening. With their bright yellow. It's like, what do I, what does this remind me of? <clears throat> Did anyone play Paper Mario 64? Um, the Flower Fields chapter. That's what this reminds me of. I'm just like, I can hear the horrible overworld music playing. All right, and now I have to, well, <clears throat> let's grab the other gun. Give that one a time. Yeah, that's a good game. Give that one time to dry. Let's just grab this second one here. Thousand Year Door was a great game. <clears throat> that game, that was my favorite Paper Mario game, and ironically, I only played it once. <clears throat> but when I played it, I, like, you know, finished it. Um, and did the, they had like the pit of a hundred trials. First time I ever, first experience with something like that as like a middle school kid. Um, it was, I was floored. It was great. Hmm. Too big brain for my Pokemon brain. Pokemon's tough. <clears throat> you know, I have um, <clears throat> I have a friend, <clears throat> mutual Yugi tuber, speed duel friend, who <clears throat> wants to stream uh, showdown random battles with me, because I mentioned that I was getting into, you know, I was kind of in the smog and stuff because I did Kino's draft thing, and I like pretended Kino's draft thing was great because like for a little bit I pretended like I knew, um, like how Pokemon worked. <laughs> And how to actually play that game. And then we did we did some random battles for fun and it was fun and it was kind of back and forth. You know, I threw out the occasional move where he had I, I threw out the occasional earthquake on a levitator, you know. Just that kind of stuff. But he's like, We gotta stream that. And I'm like, oh no, I'm not ready. <laughs> After direct, okay, well, shoot, I've only had good experiences. You know why? Because Kino knows how to organize a tournament. <clears throat> and also, no one was salty. But also, I mean, I just, like, it was just for fun. I don't know, I mean, imagine you put money in it, all of a sudden it becomes like a pain in the ass. Man, this is, uh. <clears throat> this is really, really takes a couple coats with this bright yellow. No, I gotta do more Pokemon Showdown Random Battles, especially because I'm missing out on the DLC <clears throat> for X, uh, for X and Y. Wow, jeez. For Sword and Shield. <clears throat> so, like, people send out Cub Fu, and I don't know what the heck that is. And then, <clears throat> I also did not play X and Y. It's the only one I didn't play. Besides, uh, Gen 3. Gen 3 is when I was a cool middle schooler into high schooler, and I was like, uh-uh, that's not, I'm not, I don't play that anymore. Um, and then I got diamond and I was like, yes, this game's amazing. Of course. Why'd I ever leave you? Let me just, uh, blow dry these. <clears throat> I 
Yeah, X and Y came out when I was in college, and um, I just didn't. I played it for like we all went to the midnight release and <clears throat> bought it, and I played it with everybody on the couch for five hours, and then I put it down. I really didn't, you know, I just didn't feel like. And then I got Sun, and I played that. That was when I was working, and I, I played that through work. That was great. <laughs> Last one I played was very poorly ran. Took a year to complete. Oh my goodness, a year. <clears throat> That's I think I thought I had it bad. <clears throat> Let me tell you about the deep dark world of speed duel tournaments okay most of the speed duel tournaments that you would enter online are you have 72 hours to play your match and there's like eight rounds of swiss so you're paired with somebody you know every eight rounds you're always playing it's not elimination or anything i'm painting this a drugar medal by the way i'm painting the burials the drugar medal and um a lot of people that play online for speed duel anyway are in europe so it'll be like 10 o'clock in the morning i'll be like well, can you play and then 72 hours like that over eight rounds which is what like two or three weeks um but a year sounds terrible i think that i yeah i don't know <clears throat> i liked kino's thing because it felt like it felt more like fantasy football where it was like here's your opponent and then like um I took it seriously, and I was like, well, what what beats what and what? And there were a couple times where Kino, like, hopped on Discord, and we, uh, we like, just theorycrafted my team for the week, and it was really fun. That was really fun. I hope he does another one. <clears throat> yeah. You were one of the people that never, never went away from Pokemon. Uh, there was a, <clears throat> there was a group like that when I went into high school. And they ended up being the coolest people, you know. It took me, uh, it took me, well, freshman year of high school, all, all I did was play World of Warcraft. So that's, that's fair. But, yeah, so it took me like a year and a half to get back into Pokemon. And I can't believe I ever left. Kino is very, yeah, it's fun. He was, he had me up to like three in the morning. Um... Just like, alright, this time I'm not going to tell you what I'm using. Uh, or, okay, this time, use this. <clears throat> and uh, that was so fun. It was super fun. Man, I, I feel like I'm spending just as much time on these things as I was on the container. I just This is where it's I slow down. Because, you know, you just got details. Just painting the barrels the metal. I don't think <clears throat> I, I, I get that shy, but I don't think that Pokemon's an interest anymore. It's like a way of life sounds really nerdy, but yeah, it's like <clears throat> I think that I, I, I'd like to say that I stopped playing WoW when I was out of high school, but I still buy every expansion, you know, <clears throat> and uh, and then I actually got back into it and I raided full time in Legion, which was like four years ago. But um, yeah, Pokemon will always be that way. Even if I'm not playing the... I haven't played touched a Pokemon game. I mean, I played Sun. I picked up Sun. I beat Sun. Start to finish. Didn't buy Ultra Sun. I didn't. also didn't buy Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. I didn't buy those. Um, and then Sword and Shield. And I was like, I'm in. Yeah, of course. It's like a long time... It's like a friend that moved away. That, like, sometimes comes home. And you just, like, see them. And it's like, they never left. There you go. I do want to play Black again. If that's... If there was one Pokemon game I could go back and play... I think I spent the most time on Diamond, and I was mo most happy with my team and, like, my shiny hunting and egg all that on Diamond. But Black, man, that was a game. Yeah, I'll just send out the worst game of the series. Yeah, <clears throat> I caught a little bit of, of the shit talking last night about it. I liked it. But then again, I well, I didn't play Ultra Sun. I just played Sun. But I, um, I, I mostly played it on my lunch break at work at my cube. So, I, I don't know. It was just it was just cool to play Pokemon at like my adult job three years ago when I like just got it and like I had pinned on my bulletin board the type matchup chart. Uh, it was super nerdy. Man, these are really. You know what? Let's just paint over the top of this. Oh, all that for nothing. 
<clears throat> the yellow sticking out here doesn't look great. So let's just paint over the top. But we'll, we'll keep that and... Yeah, let's do the trigger too. Ah, fine, you got me. I hope that everybody can see this. There we go. Okay, so here's basically the, the Storm Bolter, all right? It's the yellow, <clears throat> right? And that's going to kind of blend to the stripe uh, on the container. And then there's the black metallic metal. Set that one aside. And... Time Wizard would become at meta. No, I'm not reading that YouTube comment. I'm not reading that YouTube comment. I will not. <clears throat> I want to play VGC, but I don't want to play best of one online tournaments. Really? <clears throat> I mean, not really like you don't want to play. Of course not. But best of one. <clears throat> I mean, uh, yeah, <clears throat> best of one's tough. Um... I don't know, I've been playing like like um, <clears throat> Magic Gathering Arena, for example. I've been playing a lot of that. It's because I'm getting back into Magic. Those are best of one, which is like good and bad. Because like sometimes I feel like I can walk away with a, with a win I didn't deserve <laughs> because they drew r poorly. <clears throat> Same with Pokemon, probably. You know, you get a miss on something that's like an eight ninety five percent chance to hit. You walk away with a victory, like whoa. I'm like super interested in getting into that when that comes back, the VGC stuff, because I remember seeing, <clears throat> I watched the stream where you took it, your pinned tweet, I watched that one, I remember that was like, damn, that's so cool, and I think that the reason why I like that is because, <clears throat> similar to like a TCG, you showed up with your own game and your team in game, you know, as opposed to like, <clears throat> it's similar to like showing up with your deck and winning with your deck because right now all the tournaments online for Yu-Gi-Oh are similar to like Pokemon showdown tournaments. It's like, you know, you, you they're not yours. It, they're all free and available to everybody. So it just kind of loses that extra layer of like, this is mine and I worked hard and I got, and I did this, you know, that's what I liked about the physical game. Yeah, this is much easier when I decide to just paint over the top, too. <clears throat> Reuniclus? Reuniclus? Yeah. <clears throat> Personally, uh, Pokemon I never tried. Um, same with Gastrodon. I know you were a Gastrodon user, too. And I was like, what? Really? That thing? Is scary? Yeah, I guess it is. Meanwhile, I'm just using Dragapult. Like a real noob. Well, no, Dragapult's good. But, like, it's the edgy one. Alright, Storm Bolter's done. We're done. I'm gonna hit these with the hairdryer. Stay here. And now, behold the magic. <clears throat> One. Two. Ta-da. There it is. They can shoot at stuff now. So that's the container. <clears throat> um, while I have it in my hand... You gotta know when to put the brush down. But I noticed that my sweet logo could use just a little bit of a touch up on the coat. Yeah. 
I gotta remember when I get close to three hours, I gotta start the playlist over. Oh, an hour and a half? Wow, this is nothing. Perfecto. <clears throat> Love it. Okay, guys. Container's done. Look at that. So proud of that. <clears throat> Let's do the crates and the barrels. And these can, like, you know, they're going to stack. You know, you have to set one up here. You do set up how you set up your terrain. <clears throat> these barrels, if you read the rules, <clears throat> this thing has rules, okay? Uh, this is how you put it together. I already did that. <clears throat> Minotaurum Armored Container Cache, 40 point fortification, okay. <clears throat> fuel drums. A model and cover behind a fuel drum has a five plus cover save. I'm not quite sure what that means, but it sounds good. However, each time a unit successfully makes this cover save on the roll of a six, immediately roll another D6. If the result is a roll of the roll is a one, the shot has caused a minor explosion and the unit that made the cover save immediately suffers an additional D3 strength for AP5 hits uh, uh, with the ignores cover special rule. Okay, so you can, if you shoot it, it explodes. But minor explosion. I don't think I've ever seen a uh, <clears throat> an oil drum like this where if you shoot it, it like does a minor explosion. I think it's always been like a big explosion. All right, I played a lot of, of the new Tomb Raiders. <clears throat> I'm reading the rules, Ian. It's only a minor explosion, all right? You don't even have to, <clears throat> in Warhammer, there's this mechanic where if you get hit, if you get hurt enough, you then have to roll to see if that character runs away because they're scared. So thank God it's only a minor explosion. <clears throat> All right. What color do we want these crates? Let's do some orange. Let's go for the Mad Max crates. <clears throat> One of my favorite colors. Hello, Agusaku. Welcome to the stream. What you're saying is those need to be painted red. Yeah, actually. So I did. Uh, here's what they looked like before. Here's the ones that I painted on uh, the video I did. Red with the uh, kind of gray stripe, and then the, the wings and the skull is that uh, Retributor armor, that silver. <clears throat> but I got the rat skin flesh here today. <clears throat> A very fine orange that we're going to be painting our crates. Do I want to paint that? <clears throat> Actually, do I want to paint those orange or green? <clears throat> I lied. Always shoot red barrels go boom. Jokes on you. I'm gonna paint them green. They're gonna be they're gonna be so confused when they get minorly exploded on. The Lorin Forest Green by Citadel. That's what we'll use. This is the paint that makes anything look like an army uh, figure, <laughs> essentially. <clears throat> Very nice green. It's kind of just dullish green. Yep, that's that. <clears throat> Actually, might use this brush. Now, the reason why <clears throat> this is a well-known, a well-asked question. You say, "Why aren't you just painting right out of the pot? Why do you gotta take the paint and then put it on this palette and then put it on the thing?" Well, because you dip right in the pot, <clears throat> the paints have a tendency to get tacky, and you might accidentally glob like kind of this tackiness onto the model, and then of course it obscures the detail. That's why we're using a wet palette because the wet palette will thin the paints just enough with the water mixed in and of course you can kind of rub it all the tackiness and then you are painting the green <clears throat> army olive green yeah yes it is <clears throat> not my intention i bought this green when uh <clears throat> when i was commissioned to paint a 30 piece goblin army for a D, &D campaign <clears throat> and you know, they were goblins. They're like, we want the skin color to be green. I was like, all right, I'm going to base coat them all green. And it looked like I, I bought them. <laughs> I, it looked like I bought them that way. They just looked like army men. Yeah, it's kind of that army green. But you know what I like about painting these crates green? <clears throat> Rule number one, thin your paints. That is true. That is true. That is a lesson <clears throat> that I definitely learned. You know, I was, I was mentioning earlier that with the wet palette, at first I would just kind of like wet it in spots because I didn't want to like, I wasn't sure if I wanted to, <clears throat> how wet I wanted it, you know, and how 
I, I did have some some instances of some particular paints that were being difficult and they were being runny if they were too wet. <clears throat> but um, but I had much more problems with my paint not being thin enough. So now <clears throat> when I prep my wet palette, I just soak it. I completely soak it <clears throat> and it's worked. So <clears throat> I want to paint these crates green because I can show you an example of one that I did the other day. <clears throat> Check out this. Um, so. This is the green dried, and then I have some gray lining the, um, kind of lining the accent lines there. And then we have this, like, Legend of Zelda looking, like, with the, this is the gold that I have on the palette. But I really like this color. I really like, just like the Legend of Zelda vibes. So I might do, I might do all of them that way, I don't know. We'll just start with base coating. And yes, we paint over what's going to later be gold don't want to leave any gray in these ones you know we could actually kind of splash some dirt on these if we really wanted to forgot new rule, new rule number one when i painted my first mini still came out okay yeah agreed <clears throat> i was just happy that i got paint on the thing that is uh <clears throat> yeah definitely gotta thin them though don't realize how important it is until you do it a few times Just gotta get in these nooks and crannies here. <clears throat> and I'm really, <clears throat> I'm really giving it to this brush. This brush is my has been my base coating brush for a while, and you can see that the ends are starting to split, and I'm just kind of being a little reckless with it. Poor brush. Need to get my 3D resin printer going. Yeah, man, 3D printing. I definitely, so all I painted are like prepackaged, pre-made stuff. I got a friend not too far from me, about an hour and a half, in my hometown of Corning, New York, who has a 3D printer and runs multiple campaigns of D&D. And I'm like, you, he was going to come up today. And I was like, you got to, you got to come up. You got to bring your 3D printed stuff. I will just paint them for you just because I want, you know, more experience with painting Things. And I know the 3D printers aren't always like perfect, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'd be ready to kind of work with it. <clears throat> well, didn't he take over time today and forget? That's fine. That's fine. Let's paint the smaller ones, the green too. Yeah, 3D printer, it's just such a great, um, seems like such a great investment. <clears throat> because the Nolzor's Marvelous Miniatures, like the pack that's like <clears throat> two minis, of like the same class, is like probably five to seven bucks. <clears throat> Unpainted. And then, well, paints are paints. You can't 3D print paints. That'd be pretty cool, though. Back to Kickstarter for a zombie apocalypse STL files. That's cool. I wonder how much, I wonder how many minis comes with that. I hope it comes on time. You know, those Kickstarters. <clears throat> That's pretty cool though. That's how I felt when I got commissioned to do that zombie army. <clears throat> zombie army, sorry. Goblin army. That was the Oathmark Goblin Infantry. I know Just Games doesn't carry those. <clears throat> um... But Oathmark came out, I think it came out like last year. I'm not entirely sure how the game works. The guy wanted it for D&D. But it was great being just handed a bunch of minis that were already cut from the sprues and assembled. All I, all I had to do was paint them. <laughs> That's a great one. And oh, I had to prime them. But I mean, priming's no problem. <clears throat> a lot. <clears throat> a week after it ended? nuh -uh. That's awesome. I, I shied away from Kickstarter after a while. Let's see. I did a lot of my Kickstarter backing um, in like probably 2012 when the platform was super, it was still new-ish, but it was, it was before people figured out that there were a lot of people that were getting on Kickstarter and they were like, well, here are all our stretch goals and here's our, 
you know, he, here's our plans for fulfillment. And they had no idea how to, how to manage inventory and it just never happened. Or it happened like two years after, but that's awesome though. Yeah, okay. Well, I subconsciously decided that all of these are green. <clears throat> I want a free backing to a Dwarf Mini Blade based Kickstarter. Look at the Mesa March. Okay, well, March isn't unreasonable. <clears throat> dwarf Mini based. And you won the free backing. I'm assuming that's like base game. <clears throat> that's pretty cool. That's why, shoot, I'd wait two years for something I back for free. <laughs> you know? I've waited two years for something I back for money. <clears throat> all right, we got all of our crates green. That's cool. We're going to have to break out the red, I think. And um, I actually have five barrels to paint. Uh, where the, the fortification set is three. <clears throat> but in the first one that I tried, that I just did for practice, I only painted a couple barrels just to see I got it. Just to show you guys again. <clears throat> Here was the first one I painted. The first container I painted, this was like the army green. This is like the Lauren Forest with a little dirt. Got the orange there. And then this is the one I painted for the video to promote the Great Terrain Contest. Uh, this is more of a Mad Max one. You see the Storm Bolts there. Oh, that reminds me. There was something I was going to add to the Storm Bolts. <clears throat> I'll add it right, while it's still right on the container. Take a little bit of the Retributor Armor. And I'm just going to paint the vents with it right here. Yeah, just a little extra... It's very subtle. It's right there. There we go. There we go. Simple. And easy. <clears throat> I do want this to paint. I don't want to paint these that gold. Eh, maybe I'll, I won't wash this just yet. <clears throat> I will wash this though, because I think that we're getting ready to paint. Wow, look at that. I really spaced out the palette with my colors. <clears throat> I have to find somewhere to fit red. Now in this red that I have, let's see what I have. Mm, this is pretty light. I have the succubus red from the <clears throat> from the Underdark paint set. <clears throat> Linking kosher here. Uh, oh shoot! You know what? Go for it, man. That's fine. <clears throat> I just um, I'm good. <clears throat> I have complete trust in you, person I met on stream. I'll click that. Oh shoot. My uh my Chrome windows in the on the other screen, which is around. Oh man, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a so that's so many different types of models, and you have a little bit of terrain in there too. That's pretty cool. That's pretty freaking cool. That is like perfect example of like an all around like do you want to learn how to kind of paint a little bit of everything and what you might come across needing to paint in the wargaming hobby that's it yeah it looks pretty cool that's pretty cool <clears throat> and yeah all right who succubus red how red is this ah classic me I didn't dump the medium out first. So there's a lot of white in that red. Um, so we're going to have to darken this. <laughs> Couldn't tell. I have two reds, and I wasn't sure if that's the one I haven't used yet. Or uh, <clears throat> stretch goals. Oh, I'll have to check that out in a second, but hold on. Right now, <clears throat> we're mixing this. Yeah, see how it's kind of mixed. Oh, okay. That's yeah, that's too that's too pink. That's too pink. That's not what I, also ooh, is that that's pretty liquid. That's very pink. <clears throat> that won't do. <clears throat> Running out of brushes here, because that one still has the gold on it. 
specifically is this one. Oh, oh, I don't need that one necessarily. I just need something that's going to glob it onto the. It's just going to glob it onto the uh, to the palette. Rhinox hide. It's very dark brown, but sometimes we need the darkness. Things get a little too too happy in here. We need to tone it down. <clears throat> Let's see if we can take a lot of it. Here we go, Kickstarter. Yeah, pretty cool. <clears throat> the uh <clears throat> oh I gotta I gotta look at those stretch goals though. Alright, I'm gonna walk over to that screen in a second. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, did the brown take over too much? Is this too much brown? I'm just oh that's too much brown. We made a, a fatal error. We fell victim to one of the classic blunders of paint mixing. That's brown. That's brown. We can't use this. <clears throat> oh, dear. <clears throat> All right. Well, do we need brown for anything? <clears throat> <sighs> Crap. All right. <clears throat> We're learning. <clears throat> We're going to try this again. Rust? Yeah, potentially. It's like a dark... Uh, <clears throat> this is a dark brown. You can put a little gray in there and see. I don't know, because I did a lot of the... the dirt. Ooh, well, you know... <clears throat> what does this look like? So I, a lot of the dirt I put on here is very light. But what if I... What does that look like? That doesn't look bad. <clears throat> a little darker dirt. You just kind of splash this all... Across the container, you know. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> might be a little too dark to uh, to continue using in that fashion. I don't want to. <clears throat> but at least we got some use out of it. Now let's clean it. <clears throat> that poor red. <clears throat> Luckily, with the uh, with the these paints, they're. What was it? Twenty bucks for nine of them, <clears throat> and I mean they're gonna last a long time. So, and that's very very bright. You know what we'll do this time? I think you can see that a little more there because we're gonna actually let's get a lot more because we're gonna use this a lot for the uh, for the barrels. We got a lot of barrels paint. No Rhinox side. You're too strong. We will use the lighter, the subtler rigid leather. Put a little bit of that in there. That can't be too bad, right? What color? This is the yeah. This is the pink. Show me, <clears throat> man. This is just browning. This is just browning it. <clears throat> well, hold on. This is tough. It's uh, it's like a pink cream. Ah, shoot. That's not the color we wanted. I need something that's a true red, I think. You know, I'm, I'm dealing with this pinkish white, and I then, uh, like, well, let's just put this on the barrel. Let's see. Interesting. <clears throat> it's like almost like a. <clears throat> what am I thinking of? Well, we're gonna have. So this, okay, it looks like maybe the like an interior designer selection for your living room. Um, maybe what's the thing that isn't ice cream? <clears throat> Frozen yogurt. <laughs> It's frozen yogurt. Nice skin tone pink. Yeah, these are going to be very... <clears throat> That's another thing. These barrels do not like being painted on. you got to like really do a few coats. I'm just going to do... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with it. These are going to be pink barrels. Or, yeah, really nice skin tone kind of pink barrels. But yeah, no, these barrels do not like being painted on. I had trouble with the last ones like this too. <clears throat> Gotta go back and do second coats. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw it all over the barrels here. The worst part is though is if you know if I commit to this color and then I run out, uh, how, am I, how am I gonna re? Got to try and recreate the color. I think there's a lot there though. I'll have to see how this dries because <clears throat> I had to I had that same problem with this, and I think this dried okay. You can actually see though that then later applying the the middle line, you can see that the red still kind of bled through. So it's kind of tough. It's tough, but 
<clears throat> no, you can still definitely see the, the gray through here. Yeah, I don't, um, is it the barrel or is it this paint? Because this is really, I feel like I'm just, I'm just moving water around. Well, you know, there you go. It might be a little too thin. It's tough to tell. <clears throat> Let's take a different approach. <clears throat> That's our sample barrel. It took me forever to find the paints I wanted to prime with. End up in an auto store. Find yeah, agreed. Agreed. I'll tell you something. <clears throat> this primer, so you see, it's a, uh, it's kind of like a grayish. <clears throat> it's um, it's a dusting of the of black, and then just a very quick dusting of white. <clears throat> and the black and the white are the aerosol paint and primer spray paint cans, and they were three dollars at Home Depot. So I know that the Army Painter does, you know, the really nice. Uh, you know, like nine, ten dollar ones that, like, just games sells, for example. <clears throat> um, and I, I'm sure that they achieve a great result. But I have just been using the, like, the Home Depot ones, and they've been working. They've been working. It's like what do I here? I have a, I have a um, <clears throat> Stormcast Eternal unprimed right now. Well, it is primed, um, that it, unpainted. But like, you know, this was a dusting of the black, and then one dusting of the white across the top. And I think that this is ready to, this is ready to roll. And these have been pretty well, I mean, pretty good. Like here's an example of the same primer and then the paint applied. You know, it's been, it's worked. So I haven't found a difference yet. <clears throat> I don't know what I want to do about these barrels. Do not know what I want to do about these barrels though. <laughs> I have in my hands the Xeris Purple. <laughs> Cryline camouflage is more than good for me. I do I only only done many. That's fine. <clears throat> it's good to know. It's a good one to remember. Um, do I want purple barrels? That doesn't look. That does not work with this blue at all. Um, or do I want to try and keep going with my frozen yogurt? I just. How did I get this red? I don't remember how I got this red. I have all the same tools. <clears throat> Should have wrote this down. They tell you to write it down. Well, let, um, <clears throat> luckily this is a huge palette <clears throat> let me try my other succubus red because I have two and judging by the dried bits at the top this is the one that I used more what's that look like over here now that is a more solid color you don't see so the this one <clears throat> well actually they look the same in the bottom this one had the white kind of on the top of it <clears throat> this one if anything I'd rather just paint it that <clears throat> um Let's just go for this bright red. Let's go. Let's not. Let's not try and. Um, let's not try and go crazy. Let's just see. It's going to be bright, but let's see. Uh, ooh, is this dry? Oh, I'm all over the place. Uncle Adam usually. I love. Uh, I love that channel. <clears throat> Ever since I started painting, that was one of the, one of the ones I gravitated to. <clears throat> um, what is it? The, I think it's just called the Miniature Painter, right? Um, tabletop minis. That's it. Uncle Adam usually recommends it, but I need a white primer. Yeah, I was I was saying that <clears throat> I haven't really <clears throat> felt the extent of it yet too much, <clears throat> but I know that if you lean heavily on black primer, you know things turn out much darker. If you lean heavily on white primer, things turn out much lighter. So just you know, as a, as a ground like a rule of thumb, <clears throat> I've been doing. Kind of dusting is mostly black with some white to try and achieve that gray because i'm not i'm not sure if i i'm really not sure how light or how dark i want the model to be until i get to the end and then i hit it with a wash really that's that's how it's working all right so this is just the base color and it's still the barrel is still putting up a little bit of a fight getting the paint on it <clears throat> um so it's definitely the barrel and we'll just have to well, you know we just have to be patient with our barrels at least we got our container done. That looks really nice. There. Tabletop minions. Tabletop minions. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yep. 
that's a great channel <clears throat> that's a that's one of those channels where um <clears throat> it's in a channel I, I aspire to be where if somebody stumbled upon like my channel they uh they saw all the i call it evergreen content the stuff where it's like doesn't matter if i posted it yesterday or three years ago uh you just kind of binge it that's what i did when i found his stuff All right, yeah, that, we're going to need to hit this with more coats. <clears throat> but I think that how this is going to, this looks really bright on the palette, but I think how this is going to dry is um, going to be more what we're looking for with the very red minor explosion barrel. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Probably paint over that one too. And look at the difference. Yeah, something happened with, with the, uh, the viscosity on this one. Because that is doesn't even look like it's on. Let's keep going with these. What oh, we're going here? We're going here. <clears throat> Shell surfing many papers for a good two months. So I have my main pool of streamers. Then you post in just games. Oh yeah, thanks, ma'am. <clears throat> so I am I'm partnering with them. <clears throat> um, and I am painting this Sunday. I'm painting the ogre zombie on this exact channel at two o'clock. That's Sunday. And that is, uh, that's going to be uh, sponsored by them. <clears throat> so I'm getting my Ogre Zombie, I think, tomorrow or Friday, and I'll be painting it. <clears throat> um, and it's going to be like a, you know, if you buy it, you come, you join the stream, we paint it together, we hang out, and uh, and we chat. I think it'll be a good time. <clears throat> but, um, oh, night, Chai. Thanks for stopping by. But yeah, I've definitely, you know, I, when I was getting into this, I definitely found my my few that I, that I kind of come back to like Miniac and <clears throat> Tabletop Minions. There's another guy, Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy, I think is the other one I watch. That's kind of like less, it's, it's newer, but that guy is pretty good too. <clears throat> if I had my red paints, I would try and get the model. The, <clears throat> if you're talking about the uh, Zombie Ogre, it's a paint set you buy. It's like the Manticore one they did uh, a few months ago. So it's like 20 bucks and it comes with the model and it's considered like an oversized model, like a bigger one, like a monster. And then, but it also comes with all the paints. The paints are from Vallejo, which is a very reputable brand of paints, similar to like Citadel Army Painter. And uh, really like how I'm going to do it with on stream is I'm not going to use any outside stuff. I'm not even going to use the wet palette. The, the kit boasts that you can use the blister pack as a palette and i'm gonna do just that because i want to paint it like you know you you're just you're a new painter and you bought this paint kit and like the worst thing is when you try and get into a hobby and you buy something that says it's like a kit and then turns out you, you, you need something else so i'm gonna try and paint the whole thing <clears throat> with just the materials that it comes with it comes with like two brushes uh, i think it comes with like eight paints and like the little pots and then it says that you can use the the blister as a palette. I'm assuming it's not a wet palette. So, you know, we'll, we'll work with it. But we'll get it done. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. There's another barrel. Yeah, these are actually coming out much better. Yeah, that dries pretty, pretty dark. Who's one of the top five paints to use? <clears throat> there we go. The scale 75 stuff. Um, yeah, I remember there's somebody, there's somebody in the Discord that that loves scale 75. <clears throat> Haven't tried it yet. Just tried Citadel, Army Painter, and Vallejo. And uh Turbo Dork. Had a couple of those. <clears throat> Heard scale 75 is very good too. Heard it's very hard to find here. <clears throat> But heard it's pretty good. All right. 
this is looking very nice might need you know what <clears throat> I probably could have switched to a bigger brush because I'm really just slathering this on and I'm painting five of these which is uh, it's a lot of barrels maybe I'll I mean I'll cut it short with the three just kind of paint like a fortification set here on stream love skin <clears throat> Millennium was the only place found it. Okay. Yeah, Millennium's got a, a pretty good selection too. Uh, where is my... <clears throat> you said you were donated a bunch of scale 75. I mean, I'd use it. I'd use it if it was... <clears throat> you donate to me uh, house paint from a can, I'll try and paint a mini with it. You know, I, I, you, I know how much these pots cost. Finish up this barrel here, and we'll switch back to the crates, and we'll get that uh, we'll get that retributor armor on the on the wings. That's gonna look that looks really nice. All right, we got our three barrels there. Let's ignore this one. This one will be a touch up job later, and we'll leave that one to the side. <clears throat> oh, I didn't realize I'm not showing the container with the logo side. And I think, yeah, I made the mistake of leaving this out for too long, <clears throat> thinking I was going to quickly come back to the gold. And it came off, so we're good. Okay. <clears throat> so these are totally dry. Now we're going to, ooh, let's get a little more here. We've got the, no, that's right, it's flash. Right here. The Retributor Armor. I got this. <clears throat> I got this and, and quite a few others. The blue, not the green and the purple were separate purchases, but the blue and this one were, um, I bought the Stormcast Eternals, like the, the three figures that I think I, I showed. Um, and then it came with the paints and a brush just to like try and expand my collection of paints and <clears throat> get some more practice in. Those things were fun to paint. Okay, a little bit of retributor armor. Really great color. <clears throat> Going to the wings here. <clears throat> and this is really solid too. Yeah, and it's just as simple as that. Now, careful not to... <clears throat> sometimes I have a bad habit of trying to paint over something that's drying. And I don't want to create any unwanted texture. So there there it is. That's pretty, that's pretty sleek. I really like that. It gives me that Legend of Zelda vibe. <clears throat> the, green and, the green and gold. Simple as that. Those look pretty sleek. <clears throat> we'll hit these with a wash too. A couple of, but just a couple things I want to do with the crates I want to paint. These the gold. <clears throat> and then I want to do just a little bit of highlighting on the <clears throat> around the edges with like a gray. And then I'll probably hit them with a wash. I think. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I won't hit them with a wash. I was using like a brown wash on these because they are, you know, it is terrain. So, terrain really, you can really make it a lot dirtier, if you'd like, than any, than like a mini. Washes are cheating. It's true. It's skill in a pot. I, I, I painted, <clears throat> painted for like a month without washes. 
<clears throat> then I got washes and I'm like, oh, that's how they do it. I was like, how do you get, it's <clears throat> like, how do you get these little, how do you get the brush in those little folds of the arms and, and like find that kind of shadow? Like, oh, you just kind of throw a wash on it. I mean, you can do it with a brush, but yeah. Yeah, washes are my best friend. As soon as I figured out how washes worked, I got the the Reichland Flesh Shade, which is a, a popular Citadel wash. And then I went out and I bought like an Army Painter wash set of like, I don't know, eight washes. To cover like just dark to like levels of brown, reds and purples. Yeah, washes are important. Washes, I think they're the... In my experience, they're the thing where you show a mini to your friend that you painted and they're like, that's cool. You show a mini to a friend that doesn't paint that you painted with a wash on it and they're like, Whoa, how'd you do that? And I will never tell them how easy it is. I will never say. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so we got our little Legend of Zelda boxes here. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of Underdark Gray. Actually, this is Underdark Gray from the <clears throat> Underdark Paint Set mixed with a little of the Army Painter Matte White. And we'll just go <clears throat> and we'll just kind of line line with the <clears throat> just kind of freely line these lines with the gray. Oh, yep. That was, uh, got a little bit of paint on that one. Yeah. Just a little bit. <clears throat> Snippers and glue want to stay away from Citadel tools, you say? Well, I happen to, uh... I happen to also stay away from Citadel for those things, and I can show you what I have in just a second. <clears throat> because all this, the Minotaur Armor containers, all these containers came in sheets of sprues and cut them all out, <clears throat> glued them all together. And uh, Home Depot is your best friend if you are trying to <clears throat> get in and not spend all the money on the Citadel stuff. <clears throat> there are two things that I sprung for. <clears throat> the wet palette... And the base holder because <clears throat> i was sick of i had i had the dowels before and i would like put the tape on it and then hold on to the uh, citadel base holder was the greatest but <clears throat> snips husky <clears throat> that's pretty simple <clears throat> i had to buy a pack of four different kinds of these wire cutters different sizes and like pliers and it was like eight dollars for the four of them <clears throat> and then this glue i think was two dollars was also home depot the Loctite Super Glue Precision Pen. This looks like that. I really didn't think I was going to find something like this. Uh, unless I went to like a Michaels or a, or a collectible store. But I did. Um, yeah. That's pretty much all I use. And then I have a box cutter to kind of trim. You know, after you snip it, you, you trim, uh, trim the pieces. I have a video on my YouTube channel where I painted this one the great 2020 terrain contest and in that i went through the priming process the cutting gluing um kind of shaving the pieces off i, I showcase all those tools um but yeah ian you're back yeah zach the knife i got one of the i got these like this like little kind of flip out one that's also husky <clears throat> it's a great brand ian you missed so much so uh containers done we painted these crates. <clears throat> That's fine. Hey, I'm just happy that you kept me on. That's great. I'd love to see it. Uh, we got our little Legend of Zelda crates here that we're just going to, you know, we're just going through the lines with a with a silver kind of around the edges. And then we're going to hit it with a wash. And then we have our danger uh, explosion barrels that we just kind of base coated with a red. <clears throat> so we're really just kind of wrapping up the, uh, the lines on our crates. Go into our lightish gray and just touching these lines here.
I like to go one layer lower too. It's kind of like a little. <clears throat> wow, I totally. Um, how about that? I missed this side completely with the green. That's funny. Go back for that. Yeah, and these lines don't have to be like super defined. Like I said, these are crates that are out in the elements. The terrain is much more forgiving than a model. So you just kind of slap it on. These are crates, Ian. You stand on them. <clears throat> okay, you got your little guy. Okay, here's your little guy. And then you got, you know, these crates. They kind of look like this. Sometimes, you know, you got barrels. There's a barrel on one of them over here. <clears throat> and like, you know, you got to watch out because if you, if you move around them, they could explode a little bit, according to the game. And you can even get up here and you can shoot the little shooter. Shoot this little shooter right all around. <clears throat> Hobby holder. Yeah. <clears throat> you know what? I Another thing that I splurged on. Pretty cool. <clears throat> this is also at Just Games. $14.99. I think it was $14. <clears throat> Maybe it was less. Maybe it was yeah, about $15. Bucks. So I, I... Because I was painting enough unique things and I go to D&D &D campaigns <clears throat> where I actually got one of these... Um, I think it holds, what is that? Probably like 15 minis. That's like, this This is just a quality of life thing at this point. Just because I found that I was like buying more and more minis to paint. Yeah, right? <clears throat> and so, you know, I, I carry them in my little backpack with my, my player's handbook and, you know, unpack my stuff. <clears throat> like a real cool person. So, <clears throat> I definitely recommend that. And they have big ones too. That's made by Chessex, which is the guys that make like the cheaper dice. <clears throat> um, but they, yeah, those are good. They also make like the ones that hold like 50, 40 to 50. I'm just going to paint this green here. <clears throat> Another thing that I have yet to splurge on is Citadel actually has these like sticks that hold your minis so you can like hold them away from you to prime, but I still just tape them to cardboard because you know, that works too. I have yet to find value in upgrading my priming process, I suppose. Tackle boxes at Walmart, that's good too. And I think that um, <clears throat> I'm also into Magic the Gathering. I think it was the <clears throat> Tolarian uh, Community College guy, <clears throat> professor, <clears throat> that said uh, you can store all your Magic decks if you just buy this like Dualt um, like tool chest and like gut it. It's just like things like that. Is the Okay, Plano Tackle Box. That makes sense. It's probably That's probably perfect, actually. <clears throat> yeah. Toolbox with the yellow boxes. Yeah, and they come out, and you can move them around, but then, like, you can close it, and, like, they don't shift, even if you don't have them all in. It's pretty cool. Who uses those for tools, right? I only use them for my magic decks and minis. It's like Home Depot has never had more of my business, and I am not doing any home improvement. swing that's another one that i haven't i have not <clears throat> i haven't tried to delve into that one i know x-wing has been going on since like i don't know 2012 maybe maybe even earlier i started hearing about it, i think like maybe 2012 14 something like that <clears throat> and i see those models at the store and they look pretty intimidating i'm sure the game's fun but definitely looks like <clears throat> i think that those ones are really up there Last one. <clears throat> I 
fun X-Wing small town. Yeah, it's tough. <clears throat> that is tough unless you come all the way out to Rochester. Or like you go out to Syracuse or something like that. <clears throat> which is a drive. That's like, uh, you know, obviously, so I got into this hobby during COVID. And, you know, the hobby, so far I've, I've really enjoyed painting, which is something you can do yourself. <clears throat> then I think about all the people that actually enjoy taking this and playing with it and i can't imagine that's got to be tough you know it's got to be tough on them like i play i play trading card games but you know if i really wanted to there are online maybe there are online kind of warhammer things too but there are online alternatives that aren't as fun but at least it's something you know but it's got to be <clears throat> it's got to be tough to not have that that kind of group to play with <clears throat> cursives here What's going on? It's about time. Where were you? <clears throat> Newark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black hole of fun. Right between Rochester and Syracuse. Yeah, that's that's tough. That's like a half hour either way or <clears throat> something like that. Yeah, that's tough. <clears throat> Curse, have you missed uh check? It. Does this look familiar? Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> tabletop simulator. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it does... Uh, you can play it on tabletop simulator. I think of tabletop simulator and I think of... Uh, um, I, I don't know, like risk and stuff like that, you know, cause I, I, I don't know the extent uh, it's been on steam for so long and it goes on sale so many times and I still don't have it. <clears throat> so I still don't know the extent, but that's really cool. If it like, if you can accommodate that <clears throat> 45 to Ro Wow. That is, that's far. I'm just thinking like the Rochester to Syracuse, you hop on 90 and it's like, boom, an hour, you know, hopefully, but <clears throat> that's tough. I do like the Finger Lakes area though. <clears throat> I got um, I got family on Cuca Lake, so, <clears throat> and I'm in Victor, so it's um, you know, straight shot down. I'm kind of already out of the city enough. <clears throat> DDS of 40k mods actually went. Ah, cool. That's cool. All right. <clears throat> wow, man, I should get that then. Because yeah. It's not like I you have to buy those, <laughs> buy those minis. You play it, decide if you like it, and then spend the hundreds of dollars. Now, let me watch this. Yeah, magic, cool. I like it. I've been really more into the um, <clears throat> for magic. There's Spell Table, which is a browser um, where you can kind of like click on the cards on the on the webcam, and it actually does its best to read what it is. And I've been into the remote stuff. Yeah, for sure it's versatile. And it's been out for probably 10 years. <clears throat> Super cool. Okay. <clears throat> um, Alright, here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> Let's do... Oh, this detail we don't need. Let's do this one. <clears throat> <clears throat> Give me this yellow. We were, we were using this yellow for the blue. <clears throat> Let's go to the barrels and let's paint the middle with this yellow. Yeah, that's mounting the mounting the camera's tough. You know, I um a lot of people try and use their phone, which is interesting. Cursive knows about that. <clears throat> but I'm lucky enough where I use like I have, like right now, what you're looking at is a webcam. It's a Logitech webcam that I probably bought a year and a half ago when I started making like YouTube content. And I was, at first, I was upset because I realized that my phone, ironically, had better quality recording stuff. So I was kicking myself because I'm like, oh, I bought this. I'm not really using it. And then, and then I found a desire to do when I started doing the painting stuff. I had a two camera setup because I have one camera <clears throat> that's looking at like. It's, it's like this, but then I had another camera directly on the palette, so it worked out. And then I found out that you know this camera works very well to stream with. And now I think if you look at Logitech stuff, I mean it's in such high demand with schooling and all this remote stuff that I you know I, I feel lucky now. Yeah, that looks good on this barrel. That looks good. Yeah, that's a very nice contrast. Mm hmm still looks like it'll hurt you it'll explode on you if you touch it that's what we're going for let's put that one aside and let's keep going 
I really should touch up. <clears throat> I should touch up the uh, other rungs with with more of this red because you can still see the primer coming come through. Oh yeah, battery lasts about an hour. Yeah, always got to figure out <clears throat> where you can plug it in. Yeah. Yeah, whenever I whenever I do, luckily my phone's new-ish too. I just got a Galaxy seventy one or something like that, and it's new-ish. The phone itself is new-ish. I think the model's been around, but the phone itself is new-ish. Where I can actually record stuff for a while before it's like, hey, and plug me in. Yeah, I really need one of those arms that does like the direct overhead. But yeah, phone for playmat's good. I get that. I never. I honestly haven't just. I just haven't figured out like what you gotta do to to stream with it. Like recording, sure. Galaxy S9. Yeah, there you go. I've been Galaxy. I've been Galaxy for a while now. Because <clears throat> my last phone was a seven, a set an S7, <clears throat> and then I just finally got rid of that thing like two months ago because it, it was getting to the point I was trying to you know milk it for all it's worth and it got to the point where it was dying and in, in two hours I had the thing for like four years <laughs> I finally upgraded and it feels great arm would be so nice <clears throat> I played out there are tournaments <clears throat> I just played it so I'm, I'm in the <clears throat> Yu-Gi-Oh speed duel of sort of variation of format of Yu-Gi-Oh <clears throat> and there, I, I just played a remote tournament where the winner would get like a Konami brand, like camera arm, <clears throat> and I did not win, and I'm upset because that would be cool. I need that. I mean, right now I just have my webcam. So what I'm looking at my main monitor that I moved to my crafting table, and then I have the the web the Logitech webcam on it and point it all the way down. <clears throat> um, so it works for now, but I noticed that this webcam can be. A little grainier than like my phone which is why I actually recently this is new I I made this overlay tonight where it's like the Navy and you see the castle and the most recent follower I put that all in tonight because one I think that it's like a little more stream friendly and two it allowed me to minimize this camera <clears throat> so maybe some of that graininess goes away but I think it looks pretty good I don't know how to, yeah, I don't know, like, if you're streaming through a main computer, but you want to use your phone, you plug the phone into the computer, do you get on Twitch with your phone too? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to figure that out. Yeah, these stripes look really nice. <clears throat> All right. Let's go back to our red and let's just flesh out the barrels. I'm not too worried about how the barrels end up looking. I was really just mostly excited about the container. And I got I nailed that logo. I nailed that logo, so I'm good. Plus I got a lot of red still, so let's use it. This is our succubus red from the Underdark paint set. Comes on real pink, but it dries. Just a couple of touch up spots. First, if I was uh, if I like this if I like the stream layout is nice, by the way. How's the Twitch follower count coming? I haven't paid any attention. I think I'm at 20 ish. What's the uh <clears throat> what do you need for affiliate? This is my third stream. I think that you have to like stream for eight hours and have 50 followers. I'll get there. We got a stream. Uh, I was telling, I was telling somebody earlier on stream. Um, there's a, there's a friend of mine who hopped in stream and she's super into Pokemon. Um, she won a VGC tournament in Florida. 
Uh, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I got a friend that wants to do random battles on <laughs> Showdown. And I don't know how to play this game. <clears throat> because uh, I will Earthquake your Levitate Mon. I'll do it. But we gotta do that. Alright, that's a little better. Yeah, random battles. Random battles are. Oh yeah, Ian, <clears throat> still, still here with me. Thank you. <clears throat> random battles. Yeah, cursive in the chat. <clears throat> we want to do random battles. Cursive is a, uh, a, a colleague, a Yugi two, a speed duel Yugi tuber colleague. Uh, and we did random battles, what like a month ago, and it was like, oh, we should stream this, just for fun. That'd be fun. <clears throat> PGC champ watches through random. No, no, no. There's this one particular. There's one particular person who. Um, his name is Kino, but he's like the Gordon Ramsay of watching you suck at random battles. Uh, so we need to do it in front of him. <laughs> he's like the Simon Cowell of watching showdown. I commentate he did a draft he did a Pokemon draft league uh, that I was in over the summer and I didn't make finals but he invited me on to commentate finals and in between matches uh, he was like alright let's just do random battles while we wait and wow was that the most embarrassing like 25 minutes of my whole career on Twitch that was <laughs> if you get Keno and try to watch you'll be in for a treat yeah, yeah for sure I'd like nothing else if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it right. And I need that support. <laughs> Stay on this barrel, Red. I've always wanted to try draft, never had the chance. <clears throat> yeah. My first one was over the summer and it was fun. It's, it's a different way of thinking because, you know, I'm, I'm used to my whole like competitive, competitive Pokemon experience has been either essentially the equivalent of random battles on <clears throat> showdown because I would just like grind the lat like ladder, whatever ladder there is in any, po whatever the Pokemon game was that was out at the time. And like, you don't know what your opponent's team is, but with the draft league, oh, you do know what your opponent's team is. So my first week, I was like, I'm just going to pick, you know, Cloyster, Pukumuku, my boys, Dragapult. We'll go in. We're going to wreck face because that's how those Pokemon do. And then Kino was like, well, what? what is your opponent playing? I'm like, I don't know. I'm sure I'll just smell, shell smash Cloyster, right? He's like, no, no, no. You need an answer for this, 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 and this. And I'm like, oh, I do? Okay. And then I figured out how to be good at Pokemon almost. It was a great experience. A lot more thought. What am I doing next? Barrels are red. That is a fact. We gotta paint the. Uh, we gotta paint those pieces gold. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna blow dry these quick. Is a small hair dryer, but it hurts my fingers because it's so warm. Barrels are red, that is a fact. Look at them! I know colors. That's red and almost even yellow right there. And I'm gonna get, I don't want to go too crazy. I don't want to get too crazy for you, Ian. But we're gonna dip into our retributor armor uh, from Citadel right here. Okay, got that on the tip of the brush. And you see these these tiny wings right there? We are going to. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh 
yeah. Look at that. Beautiful little golden wing. Oh, there's a... There we go. There we go. Let's pick up a little more, because on the other side of the barrel, there's shiny wings, but then there's also a subtle reminder that there will be a minor explosion if you run by them. Paint that gold, too. Spooky. Spooky, just in time for Halloween. Speaking of just in time for Halloween, guys, everybody that's watching, I want to remind people to, one, retweet the stream, even though we're probably 20 minutes out from the end. Um, and two, this Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, I will be painting a large figure, the Ogre Zombie. It is a sponsored stream from my local game store, Just Games, Rochester. And you can find that on their website to purchase, and you can paint along with me, or you can purchase some, somewhere else, whatever. Um, but it is, is being marketed as a class, like a paint night and class. <clears throat> so, well, paint day, I suppose. it's a matinee. So um, tune into that. That'll be Sunday at 2. I will be painting a large zombie ogre for Day of the Dead. And it's a relatively new product that came out. Um, and it'll be fun. It'll be a blast. Alright, look at that. It gets easier. It gets easier. You just absentmindedly, all of a sudden, bam, more wings, you know? And let's go. Two. <laughs> that is a gold skull. I might have to play around with my camera a little more before the uh, before the stream Sunday, because <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, um, I can get away with painting terrain over here, you know, from a viewer standpoint, because this thing's huge. Um, but like a mini, I gotta be like, oh, you see, and now we, and that's very difficult for me to like keep my keep the uh, <clears throat> you know keep from shaking and like having it up here and stuff. I might have to fix the move the camera a little closer. That's exactly why I'm doing this, because I found that there are two different... I found that when I don't stream or record a painting, it comes out a little better than if I were to stream or record. And the reason being is that I try and play in the entertainment value, and I, I feel like I, I still end up rushing a couple things. So, all good experience. The more time I'm on stream painting these, the better. It's been great, though, this time, because uh, I've had great people to talk to. First couple streams, I think I had a couple, just a couple people. Yeah. Consider those done. All right. Okay, guys. <clears throat> I think we're done painting. Now we're gonna wash. So first, let's make sure these are dry. <laughs> let's break out the washes. What is a wash, you might ask? Man, the best part of streaming is interacting with the chat and just talking. Yes, yes, I agree. Don't get me wrong. I can talk to myself for hours. So don't you worry about that. I'm going to be just fine if no one's watching. But it is nice to have people in here. 
<clears throat> I wish that I had a, I almost wish that I had a secondary camera on like my face, but, um, I'm afraid that I would be like bending and moving and like trying to angle myself to paint the mini where it wouldn't even work. I'm not sure. <clears throat> work in progress. What is a wash? You might ask. <clears throat> a wash is essentially just a very liquid. It's, it's like a paint ish, <clears throat> but it's very liquid and it coats the mini <clears throat> or the terrain in this case. And what it does is that it finds all the shadows and all the little crevices in the model to then add that natural shadow. So there are a lot of different colors, like dark tone, mid brown. There are even some colors. We have blue tone here, red, purple, etc. We have a military shader. That one might actually work for these crates. So let's keep that one out. Yeah. Whoa, that's a nice emote, man. Anyway, let's keep the military shader out. And oh, we also have this one too, which is for Citadel. So you know it's good. The Reichland Flesh Shade. It's like more of a, like a brownish red. That might look good on the barrel. Let's try this. Use a flat brush for these. Now, you can... The meme is that you dunk these in there. You don't do that. Um, <clears throat> yes, the ambient occlusion. <clears throat> the best streams are when the streamer gets a huge hype train going. Okay. <clears throat> the streamer just freaks out all over the subs and donations. Hey, man, I'd freak out over followers at this point. I'm not looking for subs and donations really right now. I'm just looking to kind of get more into the streaming kind of experience. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm doing the stuff with just games, which is a dream come true. I love doing it. So, uh, but yeah, I can get hype. You you want to get hype over this one? Oh, thanks for the follow, man. I wasn't fishing for that at all. Don't you worry. <laughs> I wasn't fishing for that at all. Um, you want to get hype over this military shader? All right, let's do it. Is this hype? Oh, whoop. Ooh, hello. So... Look at how this comes in. So you see all the all my beautiful paints here. See how a shader comes in on the palette. Whoa. What is that? Look, it's moving. Oh, God. Oh, wait. Don't go to the gray. Yeah. It is more or less a liquid. And you <clears throat> take your brush. I like to use a flat brush. Oh, let me get a different... Or maybe this one. I think something that's... Yeah, that one's good. I'm going to dip it and you can slather it all over the piece. You can kind of be very um, <clears throat> strategic. An example is the mini that I did yesterday. Um, this human rogue. <clears throat> I did a darker tone on where the kind of the gray pants and, and shoulders are and shirt. And then on the boots, I did a brown. And, uh, and then also on the face, I did a brown. You can kind of see it actually darken the eyes a little bit. That's very hard to see. But you can do something like that. So let's dip into our military shader. And you can see it just like just very wet. All right. It's going to drip. And, and see, so you put it on. Whoa, look at that. But you just, just darkens. See, see how it sits right there on the bottoms. And like if I, if I left it there, it would, it would keep sitting there and it would be the shadow. That's a little too much shadow though. So you can really just kind of liberally apply this all over all right i'm doing it right over my mouse maybe i want to move the mouse there we go so if i did this right oh well, it's it helps that all the paints dry which i believe it is let's let that dry for a second <clears throat> i literally guess yes do it i paint stuff now that's that's my thing that's what i do I won't even, you know, people charge for this stuff. It's crazy. I'm just happy to paint any, any more experience I get. <clears throat> let's, let's grab this one too. <clears throat> Same military shader. This is what they call skill in a pot. It's where, this is where boys become men <clears throat> is the washes. I trade painting minis before I wash. Now I wash. Now I'm great. Now I have anchor arms and everyone loves me. That's what the wash is make money i'll do that you think people would pay for art that's crazy oh okay so anyway so here is bland painted crate here is whoop uh washed crate little darker shadow kind of sitting on the top there 
Maybe a little harder to see in the in the camera, but there is more character here. <clears throat> That's what we're going for. All right, I'll make money. <clears throat> All right, fine. Okay, everybody, subscribe right now. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Don't subscribe. I wouldn't know what to do with it. <clears throat> it would it would stress me out. Just follow and retweet the stream. We're twitch.tv slash uh, Rook's Table. Not VSGC, not Doghouse Esports. We're at Rook's Table. Yeah, I'm going to leave this one nice and thick a little bit right there. Stress me out. Stop. <laughs> <clears throat> and we're running on the military shader on the pallet here, but we are cruising right along. We can't even sub until you're affiliate. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's good to know. I'll have to check the rules on how to become an affiliate. <clears throat> but, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Suckers, I don't even have a Patreon or anything. You can buy my sticker. <clears throat> you can buy my sticker, man. <clears throat> Etsy.com slash store slash Rook's Table. It's a sticker of the logo. That's really it. It's $2.50 free shipping. I don't make any money off of that, really. Uh, I'm just happy you want one. There we go. Nice and dirty. And that's all of them shaded. That looks good. These look good. <clears throat> yeah, these look nice. I love the Legend of Zelda feel with the green and gold. Beautiful. <clears throat> barrels now I'm thinking <clears throat> I'm thinking Reichland Flesh Shade for this we can take this one right out of the pot because there's no tackiness to be found here it is a wash next up Yu-Gi-Oh! Oricus alright <clears throat> Pick up some stickers tomorrow. Yeah, dude, where are your Comic Con stuff? Even Terra Master, even Terra Master made a video about his stuff, and he got knocked down like the first round of the first event. <laughs> Meanwhile, I got two buys, and then just had to beat you. Easy. I'm a champion. You know that tweet got like 70 likes. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. A little. Uh, here we go. <clears throat> so here, the right from Flesh Chain. You're gonna see. Like a brownish red. I think it's going to pair very nice. It'll pair very nicely with the barrel. So we rub it right here. See, just look at... Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to show you the two skulls. Ignore the ignore the slop, sloppy sloppy er paint. But this one, uh, you got to put your hand behind it so it focuses in. But you can see that this one has more shine and character than this. I'm just trying to... I'm really trying to sell the washes. <clears throat> Curse if you don't have a Yu-Gi-Oh mat. You don't have a Yu-Gi-Oh mat. <clears throat> do you have a Yu-Gi-Oh mat? God. I'll do uh, what I did with um, <clears throat> with Lex. You know, I have one of those Speed Duel League mats because um, <clears throat> he was like, I'll give you one if you use it in your stuff. And I did. Used it in a few things. Uh, Vault 2. <clears throat> he was right. <laughs> a lamb did buy six stickers of mine. <clears throat> so... You know, beat that. Oh, that's way too much wash. Well, this is a... Oh, actually, you know what? <gasps> oh, right around the bottom there. Yeah, it's coming off into my hand, but that's okay. Because that's just... A, you're a dirty barrel, aren't you? And that's all over me. <clears throat> Lex did that for myself and a vault. We both have one of those black mats with the... With the um, with the monster and spell slots and it says SDL. <clears throat> we both got one of those for free. I think I used it in like three videos, maybe four. And then I like, <clears throat> after the, the whole thing happened, he stopped doing stuff and changed the name and all that stuff happened. I think I brought it on, <clears throat> I brought it on a couple more times as like a meme. as like a, if you know, you know, kind of thing. It's cool to have. It's like part of Speed Duel YouTuber history. I even saw the thing. He was, he hopped back on in like August because he was trying to sell the rest of them before Amazon charged him for a long-term storage fee or whatever it is. <clears throat> All right. I'll buy your mat cursive. Dork Tower art style table mat I got from... Ooh, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> I 
One mat that I love and I can't stop buying. You guys got to check out the uh, Star City Games Creature Collection. <clears throat> oh, I could buy all those mats. All right. <clears throat> we have shaded, washed. Last thing to wash is this, but I don't want to I don't want to mess this beautiful baby up. Look at that. <clears throat> so with this one, I used the military shader. With this one, I used, I think, the mid-brown shader. And I really just slapped it all over. And you can see this one, actually, I, I glued it with the container open. So I painted I painted these before I glued it. And then you can see this kind of the muddy pieces and stuff. Um, I don't know what I want to shade this particular container with. But it does look too vanilla. It needs a little bit extra dirt, you know? Yeah, Ian, I know you <laughs> painting. I'll paint stuff for you. But it's got to be on a mini. You hand me a canvas, and I will, like, stab it with a knife. I don't know what to do with a canvas. <clears throat> you know what I think will work here? Is let's just do dark tone. Let's just do, a, like, a dark. But I don't want it to go over the... <clears throat> oh. Shoot. <clears throat> I didn't do that on the door. Where's my big, where's my big old brush? <clears throat> you guys want to do a little dry brushing? <clears throat> You guys want to do a little dry? Do you guys want to do a little dry brushing? <clears throat> Please don't be so violent. Canvases are innocent. Okay, true. <clears throat> true. Um, let's do some dry brushing. I forgot to do this. We could totally get away with doing this. I'm not going to do it on the logo side, but let's take this door. Remember what this looks like. Three, two, one. Okay. <clears throat> Taking this gray. I'm just, printing, I'm just painting all over my table. Okay. Get most of that paint off that brush. Now, let's go to this door. Now look at it. Do you see the difference? All right, Chris. Have a good one. Thanks for stopping by. Anyway light gray that caught the edges <clears throat> so so subtle <clears throat> but it naturally any excess on the brush was picked up on these ledges <clears throat> i didn't want to do it on the logo side because i don't want to gray out i don't want to mess up the logo but just a little little technique there <clears throat> yeah uh, dry brushing was one of the first things i attempted <clears throat> which wasn't necessarily a good idea <clears throat> um but you know what a great place to try dry brushing on is to get better at it is terrain. <clears throat> this is to this symbolizes the dirt. That's kind of like you know because it's in the dirt somewhere. And I just picked up a brush, I dabbed it into my dirt, and I just kept painting all over the bottom of this until I ran out of paint. And eventually, it became dry brushing. If you look at the bottom, it's very subtle. It gets very subtle. Terrain is a perfect play. It's a perfect sandbox to try all this stuff. Like it's it's been really fun. It's been super super fun. Um, we did that. Okay, yeah. Let's uh, let's wash it a little bit. <clears throat> Trying to avoid the logo, but I'll, I'm going to use the dark tone. There's another. <clears throat> there's a Citadel wash that I want to get <clears throat> called Nuln Oil, that is essentially like a black wash, and I hear it's a very good. But we'll put this one over here. Okay, just a couple drops there. Yeah, well, we might wash this. This is a big piece. Put that right there. And I'm going to wash with, with, with this big old boy. The random brush found in my basement. A lot of these brushes are like, you know, Michael's detail brush, uh, Army Painter, specific layering brush, basement brush. That's the best, uh, that's the best dry brush. It's the best wash brush. Well, in this size otherwise I use like another flat brush that's smaller <clears throat> so I'm just gonna dip it into my dark this has this has the potential of, of going awry um, <clears throat> so being a, a, a mini painter I've learned that I always find things <clears throat> to continue doing so I promise I'm just gonna do two more things and then, we'll, then I think this is a wrap guys We've got everything done that I wanted so on this container, there's a piece, the another skull, and like a keypad. Let's paint that. <clears throat> First thing we'll do is we'll dip into our Retributor armor. 
<clears throat> and this skull will be that same gold color the other skulls are. One. Right there. And then the keypad is next. And <clears throat> yes, it's the last thing that we're going to be doing on stream today. And yes, I'm going to break out a brand new paint for it. Because why not? <clears throat> we have the putrid slime from the Underdark paint set. Good thing my palette's so big. Because I'm going to need some right there. <clears throat> not too much. Very light green, yellowish green. And that's what I want my keypad to be. I don't want too much paint on the brush because I don't want to obscure all that. There's like 10 little dots on that keypad. Oh, it's so hard to see on the camera. <clears throat> but we just grab a little and we just go across it here. A little more. Just got to touch up. Yeah. Little keypad. <clears throat> Little sickly green keypad. And there's one on the other side. Gonna get into that corner a little bit. And that's that. <clears throat> and with that, this is gonna be my submission to Just Games because of the logo. I don't think it's my best one. I think that <clears throat> it's hard to tell which one was my best. I don't know if this is my best. Maybe it is, but the logo is why I'm definitely why I'm submitting it. <clears throat> this right here with the three barrels, the four crates, and the one container is a 40 point fortification in Warhammer. <clears throat> and that is my submission. So everybody, that is going to conclude our stream. <clears throat> I hope that you all had a good time. If you did, tell your friends. <clears throat> be sure to follow. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Rook's Table. That should be down there. Follow me on Twitter at Rook's Table. Uh, that's it. Oh, this Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern, <clears throat> I will be painting the Ogre Zombie on stream right here. And that will be a sponsored stream with Just Games Rochester. Um, so, yeah, that'll be super fun. Um, but that's all I got for you guys. So thank you so much for, for tuning in. I appreciate the support and want, and uh, just hanging out. I appreciate having people to talk to. And uh, thanks, guys. I'll catch you later.